Jesus Church. Thank you for joining us for another amazing service. Hey Jesus Church friends and family, welcome you to another Sunday service guys. Uh, my name is Tepiso, for those of you guys that still do not know who I am yet. Welcome to everybody out there watching us. Thank you so 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 much for joining us guys. Uh, it's going to be an incredible service as we always say. And as I always say as well, I don't take it for granted that you are watching right now. Listen, data is expensive, okay? Whether you're using data or Wi-Fi, you're using money, okay? So in a way, you're actually giving into the church just by watching as well so thank you so much for making time it is a sunday evening you could have been doing anything else except being here but you decided to log in and join church online and we appreciate you so so much for doing that it's going to be an amazing one um so yeah guys well it has been an incredible month and this month we were preaching well not we were we still are it's just that today we're finishing off we are at the end of our sermon series entitled Deeper Word. Man, what an experience it's been, both physical and online. We have just had explosive word, explosive encounters with the Holy Spirit. If you are here watching a couple of weeks, um, I think two weeks ago, Mary Lisi was preaching. He gave a two-part uh, sermon series about leaders leading leaders. Last week, uh, there was the second part and the week before that uh, he was preaching the first part of that so do yourself a favor guys go back and check that out so you can see what we are trying to do as a church in this particular season we're raising leaders for the community speaking of community we are reaching out to the community of Pretoria North still in belief and faith that God is going to make a way for us to get that building Pretoria North for Jesus as we always say we are right now running a program and a campaign to acquire a new building we just need to pay that listen we are walking by faith this is such a faith journey and we believe in God that it's gonna happen by faith in Jesus name right amen so without any further ado I don't want to waste too much time because I'm so anxious to get to the word today it is incredible you want to love it a good friend of mine who I will tell you who it is after this we're just gonna go straight into the worship right now uh, yeah enjoy the worship Gonna let Notula blessing us with an amazing, amazing song item. I will see you right after this. After this, don't rush off. Stay there. Enjoy the worship. Check you out to this. weathered 
More than skin and bone can offer You consistent through and through Other love just imitation It cannot compare to you Deeper than infatuation Than the rush of something new This is soul inhabitation You're in me and I'm in you More than skin and bone can offer You're consistent through and through Other love's just imitation It cannot compare to you Deeper than infatuation Than the rush of something new This is soul inhabitation You're in me and I'm in you How sweet it is To trust you, Jesus To know you Oh man, what an amazing, amazing time in worship. Thank you so much, Guanele and Noctula. That was such a blessing to my spirit and to my soul. I always say that you guys are so talented. Thank you so, so much for giving of your gifts and leading us straight into the presence of God. Well, guys, as I said before, we are in a sermon series right now called Deeper Word. And today, today is the sermon finale. And we saved one of our best, I don't want to say the best for last, but one of the best for the last uh, insert. Kumo is here to bless us with an amazing word entitled, Who Told You? And I just want, I just want you to keep it in your head. Who told you? I'm not going to go in depth because this word is so tailor-made for the season that we are in. Who told you? Kumo's coming with fire, guys. So prepare your environment, prepare your atmosphere, prepare the space in which you're sitting for God to speak. Because trust me, he definitely spoke when I heard Kumo preach this for the first time. And if you know Kumo, he always brings it. So prepare your atmosphere, get ready for the Holy Spirit just to do a work inside of you. Call people, share, tell people, hey, it doesn't cost that much. Just say, if, if, if this word resonates with you, even during the word, if it's resonating with you, just share and send it to somebody and say, my friend, you need to hear this. Whoever, I believe this, guys, that whenever there's a word given, sometimes the Holy Spirit imparts names of people and we remember people who I believe the Holy Spirit is saying that, hey, this person also needs to hear this word. So please do share the content. It doesn't take much. Just simply just YouTube actually has right now. You can look down on the screen. You'll see a button that says share. When you click on that button, it will give you a link. You just copy the link and you send it to anybody who, if you're on your phone, literally all you need to do is just say share. YouTube already copies it for you. It just goes to your WhatsApp or wherever it is that you decide to share it and asks you who is it that you want to share this to and you can share. You can even put it on your status. Most of the people that are watching our service, we realize by the analytics that people actually come in through because of click-throughs. So it's people that see this on statuses, uh, on other people's uh, uh, social media platform and they come through to the service. It has never been easier to invite a person to church, guys. So these days you don't even need to, well, you, it's important that you do, but these days you don't even need to like go to them face to face. You can literally just send them a link and say, this will bless your heart. So without any further ado, guys, prepare your spirit, prepare your atmosphere for this word. Enjoy it. Don't rush off we are going to go into a moment of offering after this also just telling you how you can get involved with the building project that we are doing in Pretorino. so i'll see you after this god bless you enjoy hello friends hello friends welcome back we are here we are here and i'm saying welcome back because you should be here every sunday if you're not here every sunday i don't know what you're doing but guys start putting it in your calendar every sunday six seven seven you must be here and we must be glorifying 
worshiping the Lord together. I mean, we had the most powerful service last week and the week after that and the week after that because that's what we do. We have wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sessions. So guys, man, last week was powerful. All about leadership. You know, the, the, the Lord declaring to all of us that you are all leaders and you must lead it was so, 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 so powerful. Guys, we are still on the season. This is the, the last preaching about the word and we're just gonna go i hope you're gonna enjoy this one because for me it's it's nice it's very very nice it's something that god told me and i feel like i should share it to you and uh we're gonna be impactful it's part of part of you being a leader needs you to know what you have to what you're going to hear today so it's going to be very 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 nice i hope that you're chilled i hope that you're relaxed i hope that you are ready we are of course jesus church and i'm kumo and i am very much privileged to be here be sharing the word today i haven't shared the word in some time but here we are i'm nervous as always <laughs> but trust me trust me the word of god still have to take charge can we just close our eyes and, and open this session with prayer father we thank you holy spirit we glorify your holy name we believe father lord that you are here with us in our presence, Father Lord Papa Kalibitzolomaji. So you are here and just leading us, just whispering to us, Father Lord Marnaka, knowledge and wisdom in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you for Jesus' church as we are making friends. We thank you, Holy Spirit Marnaka. I pray that you bless each and every person that is watching this, Holy Spirit Marnaka. Touch their hearts, touch their situations, make a change in their lives, oh Father Lord. I pray, Father Lord Marnaka, that you conduct this session in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen yes guys man I hope that you are ready for this I hope that you are in expectance I, I, I want people to be expecting something and that's that's how we grow in the glory of God that's how we grow as Christians by us expecting something from God we have to expect something from God that's how he gives to us so today's uh, title today's title is uh, I'm just let me just read this scripture first then tell you a story then I'll reveal the title let's do it <laughs> let's do it so we're just gonna read this scripture Roman uh, revelations 20, uh, revelations 2 verse 29 and the Bible says that whoever has ears let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches and I find this scripture very very fascinating especially now that we are in the in in deeper weight and then when we focus on deeper weight the Bibles when it says that let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches I I, I, I want you to recognize or realize that there is no way you, you, they, there's going to be a word if you're not going to hear it. The word is there for you to hear it. Now, certain things that we hear as Christians that, that we, we hear around in the world, there are good things and there are bad things that we hear in the world. And the, the Bible says that faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. I, I want you to put that in your mind as I tell you this story. And it is something that I have heard, something that affected me. When I was in grade eight, yeah, I'm taking you back now. Back, not that back, back. I'm not that old, but it's like, yeah, it's a long time ago, guys. <laughs> it's a long time ago. When I was in grade eight, uh, I was elected to be class rep. So I was the class rep. And then, uh, um, you know, there was this time uh, a situation happened where we were we were alone in class, and you know, Tepiso knows this very well. Okay, I, I'm not sure about Tepiso because <laughs> we, we went to total different schools. But but guys, for us, if you left us alone in class, ah yeah yeah yeah, it's a mess. I mean, in my head, I'm I'm not even thinking I'm the class rapper. I should stop whatever is happening here. Guys, we are having fun, we are beating tables, we are dancing, it, like it's loud. It's like we, we are the loudest class in the school at that very moment. And I remember this quite well. 
the, the teacher sneaked up on us. <laughs> and when the teacher sneaked up on us, she just found me standing up. <laughs> it's like, oh Lord, like everything just froze. Like the teacher's just, it's, it, he's, she's in and there's nothing I can do about it. Like she's just there. And it's like, yo, okay, pause, walk of shame to my table. <laughs> and I sat down. But, but what I want to tell you about this story is what happened next. The teacher sat down and she was like, you know what, Kumo? I was very, very surprised when they chose you to be that last rep. That affected me. That really, really like messed up my day. In fact, part of my year, it messed me up. Uh, and and I, I'm telling you this story because the words that she said stood with me until maybe 10 years back, until maybe, yeah, until maybe 10 years back. And for me, it was like, Kumo, clearly you cannot be a leader because the things that you do, the things that, 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 that you, the way you act, you act more as a follower, you act more as someone who should be led than being a leader. And that affected me a lot. And that, I thought that was my reality. I thought that this is my life. I cannot be a leader because of the words that she told me. But the topic of today is who told you? So from all those things, I want you to be with me on this mindset. Who told you? I mean, I mean for me, it's like, who told you you are not good enough? Who told you you are not strong enough? Who told you you are not smart enough? Who told you you are not man enough? Who told you? There are certain things that, have, that people have told us and we have took those things and made them part of our realities. But the question today to you is, who told you? And we're going to be looking at Jesus. We're going to be looking at Jesus, just focusing on, on, on how he lives by asking himself this question all the time of who told you? Because it's very, very important that we realize that if God didn't tell us to do something, then clearly we shouldn't be on that, that thing. We have to focus on God's word. What did he tell us to do? So I'm asking you today, who told you? Who told you that you cannot get that million dollar house that you want? Who told you that you cannot get all, 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 all the, the, the riches in the world that you want? Who told you? Because if God told you, then it's certain that you won't get them. But last time I, I, I checked, God's answers were yes and amen. <laughs> so guys, guys, let's, let's focus on this and just look at Jesus. And we're going to be reading from the Matthew 16. Uh, guys, if I'm fast today, please bear with me. I just, I just want you after this session to just be chilling and be thinking of these things that you thought that you couldn't do, that you thought that, you know what, maybe I'm not meant for that because of things that you have heard as, we, as you were growing. Because, because I'm telling you, there are certain things that you are more than capable of doing, but you, because someone told you something, you, you are stuck on it that I cannot do it. Because most of the time, I will tell you about myself as well, most of the time I, I was like, you know what, Kumo, uh, because your handwriting is horrible, and you cannot draw well. Well, clearly, they, you shouldn't be in even pursuing anything in artistic realms or anything just that has to do with just uh, pictures and whatnot. Like, you are, you're horrible at those things. But guys, I'm a graphic designer. <laughs> I'm a graphic designer. And my customers love my work. So, I mean, like, it's, it's those things where you have to ask yourself a question. Who told you? This will, should change your life. Guys, we are reading from Matthew 16, from 13 to 17. And the Bible says that when Jesus came to the region of Syria, Philippi, he asked his disciple, who do people say the son of man is? They replied, 
Some say John the Baptist. Some people say that he's John the Baptist. Others say that he's Elijah. And still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. That's what people say that, that Jesus is. They, they, because the thing about it is that when I see Tepiso, I have a perception of who Tepiso is in my life. So I see Tepiso that way. It doesn't mean Tepiso is that way, but it's according to me. But the moment Tepiso believes my perception of him, then he becomes dead. So we carry on with the scripture, and I, like I, I, I'm, I'm so hyped up at, at this. It's like going back to the topic. But, but what about you? He asked. So he asked the disciples, "Wena, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am?" Simon Peter answered, "You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God." Jesus replied. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my Father in heaven. So you, you see, when you know who you are, when, when, when you have realized who you are, when God has told you who you are, when someone confirms who you are, I mean, everyone was just saying of who, who they think Jesus is and what so not, but Jesus knew who he is. So when Peter said who Jesus was, he's like, exactly, I am that person. Because and, 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 and I, I like it more when he says that clearly this is not flesh and blood. This is not your mindset that, that has revealed this to you. It is God who has revealed this to you because he has told me who I am. But that's, that's, that's where we dwell in. It, it's high time we understand that it is God who can tell me who I am. And when someone prophesies upon my life, this is who you are, Kumo, then I have to accept it because I know it is the truth automatically. But when you do not know who you are, when someone tells you you are this, you start to believe it, especially for most of us, it's people that are around us. It's people that are grooming us. It's people who, who have a perception of us or over a long time time because they have been with us. And sometimes those people can be the one that are crushing you. Those people can be the one that are, are taking you down or limiting you. But, 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 but the Lord says, this is who you are. And we, we see this. We see this in the Bible a lot because, because they, they have took David and put him into the world to, to become a shepherd of sheep because they did not see the leadership capabilities in, in, in David. They did not see David to be king. In fact, everyone in the household, all his brothers, all his fathers, they had forgotten about him until, until, until uh, Samuel said, no, they should be someone else. You see, there are certain things that they, the places that they have put you that you, you have to take out, you, you have to take yourself out of because they have positioned you in, in their perception of who you are. But God is telling you that, ask a question, who told you? Who told you you are dead? Who told you you are dead? And we're just going to read the last, last, uh, last uh, Bible verse and I'm just going to be out of your way because my, my, my work today is just to ask you, who told you? <laughs> so we're reading from Genesis 3, 10 to 11. And this is right after when, when, when uh, Adam and Eve had eaten the forbidden fruit. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I, I really know and I really understand that people know where I'm going. I mean, I'm with, I'm with uh, Tepiso in, the, in, in here right now. And it's like, oh my word, I see. Automatically, I see where you're going. So, so the, the serpent has, had convinced them that, you know, whatever God, God told you to, 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 to do, it, it does not imply with this certain fruit. He has deceived them, and they are now deceived. And, and, and the, 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 the Bible continues in, in Genesis 3 from 10 to 11. It says that, that uh, he was hiding. Adam and Eve were hiding. 
then uh, God called out to them. The Bible says in 10, it says, he answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. You see, most of us are hiding. Most of us are hiding. We are hiding because people have told us who we, we should be. People have, have categorized us and said, okay, because you do this, this is, this is where you belong. But I am telling you now that start listening to God because these people did, clearly did not listen to God. That's why they are now hiding. You are, you are hiding from the works of God. You are hiding yourself. You should be something great in your life, but you are still struggling with the things of the world because someone had told you that you are not good enough. I'm here to tell you that God didn't say that. God did not say that to you. You need to come back and ask yourself a question. Who told you? Who told you? Because if God told you, then you are there. But if he didn't, then come back. Listen to what he says. In 11, and he said, who told you? This is God told, talking to, to, to Adam. He says, who told you? Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from, from the tree that I commanded you not to eat? Because we have eaten so much from the tree that he had commanded us not to eat that we have, we have made our prophets their, our gods. We have made our fathers, our mothers, our gods. Everything that we fall on is what their perception of who we are is. It's high time we ask ourselves the same question that God asked Adam in the garden. Who told you? Who told you? I'm, I'm, I'm now speaking in the terms that you are good enough. You are more than a conqueror. Those are the words that come from the Bible. That you are, you, are, you are above and not beneath. That greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. So who are you talking about? Like who told you that you are not good enough? Who told you that you are not capable enough? If anything, we should be focusing on the word of God. And that is the word that I have today for you. It is for you to ask yourself the same question that I've been saying for maybe 70 times on this 20 minutes program. Who told you? You need to ask that, that question. I hope, I hope that we can go back and really, really understand that there are certain things that we are dwelling so much on because because we do not understand what God has told us or we have forgotten what God has told us. It is high time we go back to the word. It is high time we go back and really, really listen to what God is saying to us. You see, Jesus understood that, okay, this is what people are saying. This is what people are saying about me. This is what people are saying about me. But he knew this is what God told me I am. When you find who you are, there's no one who can take you away from it. That's how Jesus wants us to live, to live in a position where we ask ourselves, who told you? And we, we neglect every other answer that does not comply with God had told us. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this session. It's, for me, it's a definite like reminder for myself to say that I'm not gonna push myself down. I'm not gonna doubt myself, doubt myself in certain aspects. I can do anything as long as God told me to do it. I can stand here and preach. Though I'm a shy person, I can stand here and preach because God told me. So what did God tell you today? What is God? What has God been telling you to do? Go and do that. Ask yourself that question. Who told you? I am very, 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 very excited uh, about this, this, uh, this uh, sessions of the word. If you have not heard anything about about them, guys, go back. Obviously, next month we have another uh, uh, another preaching, another title. But this one for the word was very, like, it was literally for me. I hope that if you miss something, you go back and you just watch it, guys. My name is Kumo, and uh, 
your friend. <laughs> Thank you guys. Good night. Oh man, what an amazing, amazing word from my brother there, Kuma. Thank you so, so much, my friend. That was an incredible, incredible word. Who told you? Yeah, who told you guys? Ask yourself this question. Who told you that you can't do what God has said you can do? Who told you that you are not who God says that you are, guys? It is amazing to hear the words that are coming from this church. The brothers here are just so on fire from Rabs to Menelisi to Kumo, guys. We are so blessed with a plethora of preachers hopefully we've been trying to slowly but surely push the ladies of this church to also jump on this platform and they know who they are if you're watching this you know who you are and you know that god has given you. there's a number of them you guys know who you are and you know that god has given you the gift of preaching we can't wait to hear you guys and hear what the lord is going to say to the church through you guys so without any further ado guys we are now going into a moment of offering and uh the scripture that I'm going to read from today is found in Psalm 37, verse 4. And it says, Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do all these things. He will make your righteous reward shine like the, the dawn. Your vindication like the noonday sun. I love this scripture so much because it's so loaded when it comes to even offering. It says, Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I love the fact that it says take delight. That means that it's saying basically that we must find our joy or seek our joy in the ways of the Lord. So whatever God encourages us or tells us to do, that we must find our joy in. And when the Holy Spirit begins seeing that it pleases us to please the Lord, in our doings and in our way of living, then he begins to give us the desires of our hearts. And I believe that one of the major desires that the Holy Spirit gives is the gift of generosity. The Holy Spirit is generous by nature. God is generous by nature. So of course he will give us the desires to be generous. That's what the Bible says that God gives seed to the sower. So God waits for you to develop a spirit of generosity then he gives you the means to be generous i hope you get what i'm saying like god looks at us and he says okay this person has developed a spirit of generosity i see them having the desire to give the only thing is that they don't have anything to give so then god begins giving us things to give whether finances resources time our ears for other people to hear whatever our gift is god has blessed us with so many ways to give and he says that when i see you do this i will begin to give you the desires to do what i have told you why what i desire you to do so it's such an amazing thing and it goes on further to say commit your way to the lord trust in him and he will do this i love the fact that it says commit to him committing means that you are totally and completely devoted to doing what he has said you should do and he says trust in him this is my point it can get very difficult for us to trust the lord especially in the area of our finances but god says trust in him and he will do this meaning that god is saying if you trust me I know that sometimes you look at the money like, oh Lord, where is this going to come from? How am I going to make it to the end of the month? I've given into your kingdom and now I'm waiting. I feel like there's nothing. I've been in a season as well where God has challenged me to give. And once I've given, I'm like, oh Lord, how am I going to do this? Maybe something goes wrong in my house. Like maybe I get a flat tire or I need to replace something on the car or do something in the house. And I've given away that money. The Holy Spirit has given a give it. And I've given it away and now I'm like, Lord, what I'm going to do? That's where the trust comes into place. And friend, I can tell you this as a testimony that, listen, God has never let me down. The Bible says that never have I seen the righteous forsaken or, he, or, or the Lord's children begging for bread. He is always giving. If he doesn't give you finances, he will make sure that he gives you what you need for that season. So I hope this encourages you guys. I hope that you are blessed by this. Please Hold your seed in your hand. It is very important to get into the practice of praying over the seeds that you plot and over the tithes that you give. If you're giving into the building, pray with us. Let's pray right quick. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, O Lord God, for this moment, this time. We thank you, Father, just for the ability to come into your, into your house 
and stand here and sit here and listen to your word for this is our this is our response to you saying we trust you with all that we are we trust you with our finances we trust you with our resources we trust you because you've told us to trust in you and you've never let us down we honor you we glorify you with our tithes our offering our givings our seeds and everything that you are doing our, our talents our gifts oh lord god we say have your way this is us saying you are worthy of it all in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth i pray amen and amen oh friends we have come to the end of a service uh it's sad that we have to go but hey we are not gone we are online during the week listen join us for prayer uh, um on Wednesday, every week we are on WhatsApp. You can just communicate with us, call us, contact us on our contact number. We will get in touch with you and show you how to join the prayer group so that when we pray every Wednesday at 7 o'clock, you can join us. People join us on Wednesday. They they, they see a call on their WhatsApp, on the church WhatsApp group. They open it and only to find us there speaking in tongues. So it is a great time in the presence of the Lord. We can't wait to see you there. And we can't wait to see you next week. I love you. We love you from Jesus Church. Peace.